the big powers are traveling on the dangerous road of our marment. The signpost just ahead of us is oblivion. Can the march on this road be stopped? Yes, if public opinion uses the power it now has. The right of an individual to refuse to kill, to torture, or to participate in the preparation for the nuclear destruction of humanity seems to me to be fundamental. This was Sean McBride, and this is the good, the bad, and the pure evil. Born in Paris, 1904, son of Major John McBride and Maud Gunn, he would live in Paris until his father's execution after the 1916 Easter Rising in Ireland. He would then go to Ireland. In 1919, at just age 15, Sean joined the Irish Volunteers, who fought as part of the Irish Republic Army, IRA. Now this IRA is different from the later IRA. Sean will be part of the old IRA, fighting for freedom, while the later IRA or new IRA would crop up during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. They would take inspiration from the old IRA. So the Irish Republic Army in 1919 would take part in the Irish War of Independence. In 1921, Sean would be against the Anglo-Irish Treaty and he was imprisoned by the Irish Free State during the Civil War. He would be released in 1924 and Sean would go on to study law in the University College Dublin and would keep up his IRA activities. He worked as a personal secretary to Eamon de Valera for a while. He would travel to Rome with de Valera to meet various dignitaries. In 1925, Sean got married to Catalina Kidd Bulfin, who was four years older than him and shared his political views. Catalina was the daughter of the Irish nationalist publisher and travel writer William Bulfin. Sean would return to Dublin in 1927, becoming the IRA's Director of Intelligence. Before that, he worked as a journalist in Paris and London. When he returned to Dublin, he was arrested and charged with the murder of politician Kevin O'Higgins, who had been assassinated. Luckily for Sean, he was able to prove that he was on his way back to Ireland at the time of the assassination. A witness politician, Brian Cooper, was next to Sean on the vote, and he placed Sean there and not in Ireland. So the charges changed to being a subversive, and he went to Mountjoy Prison. Nearing the end of the 1920s, many supporters left to join Fianna Fáil, but some of the IRA wanted a more left-wing agenda. After the IRA Army Council turned this idea down, Sean created a new movement called Seer Error, or Free Ireland in 1931. Seer Error would be declared unlawful, although it was a non-military organisation. With its growth came threats, and Sean would become the security service number one target. In 1936, Moss Twomey, chief of staff at the IRA, went to prison for three years. Sean would take his place. The movement wasn't in a great place with many conflicts with others. Tom Barry would become chief of staff to head a military operation against the British. This action Sean was completely against. 1937, Sean would be called to the bar. He resigned from IRA when the Constitution of Ireland was enacted later that year. While a barrister, he would often defend IRA prisoners of the state. In 1944, he would defend Charlie Currens, who was being executed for killing Garda detective Dennis O'Brien. In 1942, but Sean couldn't stop this execution. In 1946, Sean would conduct an inquest in the death of Sean McCaughey. At it, Sean McBride embarrassed the authorities by forcing them to admit that Port Leach prison had inhumane conditions. 
1946, Sean would create the Republican Socialist Party called Clan Republica, or Family of the Republic in English. Sean's aim was that this new party would replace Fianna Fáil as Ireland's major politic party. In the October 1947, Sean won a seat in the Dáil. On the same day, Patrick Keenan also won a seat for the party in Tipperary. These were won in local elections. In 1948, at the general election, the new Clan Republica only won 10 seats. The party joined Fine Gael Labour, National Labour Party, Clan Natalhum, and several independents to form the first joint party government with Fine Gael's John Costello as Taoiseach. The leader of Fine Gael was Richard Mulcahy, who Sean and others Republicans never liked to trust it because of his role in 77 executions under the government of the Irish Free State in the 1920s during the Civil War in Ireland. To gain a bit more confidence from Clan Republica, Mulcahy would step aside, allowing Costello to step forward. Cl two Clan Republica TDs joined the cabinet. Sean would be one and he became Minister for External Affairs. Sean would advise Costello to nominate Protestant Dennis Ireland to the Shannad Aaron the first resident of Northern Ireland to be appointed as a member of the Oireachtas. Ireland would be the Irish representative to the Council of Europe, helping Sean in the leading role he was to play in securing acceptance of the European Convention on Human Rights, which would be signed on November 4, 1950 in Rome. In 1950, Sean would be president of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the Council of Europe. He also was Vice President of the Organisation for European Economic Co-op from 1948 to 1951. When NATO was calling on countries to join, Sean would be responsible for Ireland not joining, so securing their neutral status. Sean would play a big part in the repeal of the External Relations Act and the passing of the Republic of Ireland Act, coming into force in 1949. This would declare that Ireland can officially be described as the Republic of Ireland, and the President would have the power in its external relations. 1951, Sean would order Noel Brown to resign as Minister of the Mother and Child Scheme after it was attacked by the Catholic hierarchy and the Irish medical establishment which was controversial at the time. The same year, Sean's party, Clan Republica, went down to just two seats in the general election. Sean kept his seat again in 1954. He would oppose the internment of the IRA suspects during the border campaign. He contested both in 1957 and 1961 general elections, but failed to get elected in those years. So Sean retired from politics, but continued to practice law. In 1983, Sean would be attempt to run as a candidate for the Irish president, but didn't receive the backing for it. Sean was also involved in politics internationally, starting back in 1929, an Irish section of the League Against Imperialism was created and, and Sean served as his secretary. From 1961 to 1975, Sean served as the international chairman of the Amnesty International. 1963 to 1971, he was secretary general of the International Commissions of Jurists. Next would be the International Peace Bureau in Geneva, where he was elected chair from 1968 to 1974, and then president from 1974 to 1985. He also was Vice President of the Organisation for Europe Economical Co-op from 1948 to 1951 and then President of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe in 1950. He was involved in the International Prisoner of Conscience Fund and was appointed the International Commission 
for the study of communication problem in 1977. Sean drafted the constitution of the Organization of Africa Unity and drafted the first constitution of Ghana, lasting until, until the coup in 1966. He was a signatory of the Convention for European Economic Co-op, the Convention for the Protection of War Victims, 1949, and the European Convention on Human Rights. He would be part of the drawing up of the constitution of Sambia, and Tasniak. Sean would be appointed to many positions in the UN, like Assistant Secretary General, President of the General Assembly, High Commissioner for Nambia, where he formed the UN Institute of Nambia. Then he was President of UNESCO's International Commission for the Study of Communication Problems, which would produce the McBride Report. This report was controversial. It was seen as an attack on the freedom of the press. Throughout the 1950s, 60s and even 70s, Sean worked for human rights worldwide. Sean would take an Irish case to the European Court of Human Rights. The case was about hundreds of suspected IRA members who were imprisoned with no trial in Ireland in the 1950s. He along with other lawyers founded justice which was a UK-based human rights and law reform organisation. At first it was to monitor the show trials after the 1956 Budapest uprising. Later it became the International Commission of Jurists in the UK. Sean was part of many international organisations with human rights at the core. Among them he held close to his heart was the Prisoners of Conscious Appeal Fund. In 1973, Sean was elected by the General Assembly to the position of High Commissioner for Nambia, with the rank of Assistant Secretary General. Because of his father, who led the Irish Transville Brigade for the Boers against Britain in the Boer War, Sean had unique knowledge to South Africa's government. In 1977, he was appointed the President of the International Commission for the Study of Communication Problems and in 1980, he was chairman of the UNESCO. All of this didn't go unnoticed, and in 1974, Sean was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for being the person who mobilized the conscience of the world in the fight against injustice. The year after, he was awarded the Lenin Peace Prize, and then in 1980, he received the UNESCO Silver Medal for service. During the 80s, Sean began the appeal by lawyers against nuclear war. The International Peace Bureau and International Progress Organization would sponsor this. In 1982, he was chairman of the International Commissions and looked into reports of violation of international law by Israel during its invasion of Lebanon. It would find the government of Israel committed acts of aggression. In 1984, the McBride Principles would be created. These principles, Sean argued, would eliminate discrimination against Catholics by employers in Northern Ireland. He received support for, for this by the US and the Irish party Sinn Féin, but it was criticised by others, including the British government and most of the Northern Ireland parties. In his elder years, he lived in his mother's home which famously served as a meeting place for many Irish nationalists. Sean died in Dublin, January 15, 1988. When his death was announced to the world, the African National Congress, Oliver Tambo, would say that Sean McBride will always be remembered for the concrete leadership he provided to the liberation movement and the people of Nambia and South Africa. Driven by his own personal and political insight, arising out of the cause of national freedom in Ireland. Our debt to him can never be repaid. The Amnesty International headquarters in Ireland is called Sean McBride House in his honour, and a bust of Sean was unveiled in 1995 in Ivey House, headquarter of the Irish Department of Foreign Affairs. Thanks for listening. Next time I'll be looking at the Great Irish Famine a time of mass starvation and disease in Ireland from 1942 to 1952. Until then, this was the good, the bad and the pure evil.